What's up, folks? Welcome back to the stream. It's Tuesday. We're getting tactical once again, everybody. And uh, this is, I think, going to probably serve as a bit of a capstone to our discussion about the World Championships of Warhammer. If you got my video uh, that released uh, this morning, I talked all about Manny Chima's win at the World Championships of Warhammer. Um, he went, uh, I think the final record was nine and one to go, uh, to, to end up at top place with a, like a ridiculous best of three finals at the end. Absolutely insane. Um, results to get to that point. Super cool. And congratulations to him. But I talked about all his lists. I did a huge breakdown on his list and all of his matchups, uh, the strengths and weaknesses, as well as things that happened on stream. So please go check that out. Uh, if you haven't already. I also do want to apologize to people beforehand, a little bit before we get too far in. I'm uh, still getting over what is um, probably a cold or a flu or something, but it kind of put me out for the last couple of days. Um, getting the videos done over the weekend was a, a, a Herculean effort, but we got there. And uh, so I'm a little sniffly today. Uh, this might not be the longest Tactical Tuesday stream of all time, uh, just simply because I am um, uh, still dealing with some headaches and, uh, and not 100% not back in the saddle just yet but uh, i'm getting better slowly but surely so that's good uh in addition i got some other streams coming up um later on this week that are scheduled right now uh inky wants to come say hi maybe no nope. okay maybe later oh nope as soon as i looked away she said yes i'm gonna come say hi inky you want to come ha hang on a stream with everybody no you're just gonna look at me forlornly why are you talking to them and not me trevi what's going on with that what the heck um, so I have a stream in, after this in a couple hours that is, um, gonna be a commentary game over on the purple channel. That's going to be Astra Militarum versus Chaos Knights. Kind of a cool matchup. I'm excited to play that or just to see that one play out. That's a T5S2 pod finals. And then I have a T5S2 GT game tomorrow. So that game tonight is at 7.30 PM US Eastern. So it'll be an hour or two after the um, stream concludes here. Uh, and then um, I have a D GT game tomorrow. That's going to be versus uh, a Thousand Suns versus a Blood Angels Iron Storm Detachment, which sounds super fun. So I'm excited for that. Uh, I actually played against like mech heavy Space Marines in round one. So we're getting Space Marines on Space Marines on Space Marines, which is kind of fun. <laughs> uh, what's up in chat, everybody? How's it going? Matez, thank you so much for the kind words. I appreciate that, dude. Nurgle Matt, nice to see you in chat. Please uh, please ask Nurgle to take a break on me. I would appreciate that. That'd be great. At least on my sinuses. <laughs> I hope I don't sound too bad today anyway. But that's what's going on uh, after the stream. So come hang out with me for that. I would appreciate it. If you haven't got watched the, uh, the Mini Chima video, please go watch that one. Um, and let's talk about some friggin' world championship lists, everybody. Let's talk about some results uh, from the world championships. I've got the, uh, the BCP event open right here where you can see the final placements of everything. Now we've talked about several of these lists already last week, because last week we went through and we picked out the coolest lists to talk about. But today we're going to be talking about raw power. Um, now Manny Chima, obviously I have a 30 minute video about his list. So, uh, if you want to, we want to hear about him, you can, listen to that one uh john lennon i talk about both in that video uh and in the last week's stream um but we can touch on it again because his list is is super cool um and honestly i, I know there's you know there's a lot of discourse about the finals uh and and you know who who should have won the world championships all that shit um i might have an update video about that because uh i know that the discourse on the internet is largely incorrect about what exactly happened to the championships um but i do think that john lennon i think has proven himself to be uh you know if not the certainly within like the top three or four best players in in the world um simply because of his ability to take a list that is so unspeakably technical right this is not an iron storm detachment this is not an anvil siege force this isn't like a, a blunt f force object that you use to beat your opponent to, to, into submission with this is a list including company heroes and like minimum eradicator squads this is a, a list that you have to be able to use um with precision in order to succeed with 
and it, uh, it he was able to do that um, you know almost flawlessly over the course of the weekend and that is super sick so honestly like you know uh it, too bad he didn't win the whole thing but uh kudos to john lennon for taking a list that i i mean honestly like i think he just really liked and i that speaks to me so much <laughs> because that's always what i'm uh every time i you know i'm building a list i'm like well i want to play with the things that i like obviously i I'm, I'm driven to win games of 40k when i'm playing competitively but i would rather do it with the list that i that i um enjoy playing and john constantly just takes lists and factions that he really he really enjoys and that play into his play style and doesn't really care about the overall meta game uh in as much as that you know he's not he's not taking the top tier number one a a tier stuff he's taking the stuff that he likes to play and that has good play into that stuff um and that's what he took here uh i, I do think that it was probably a bad matchup going into chaos space marines um so i think manny was highly advantaged in his games against john but john was able to play it uh you know basically to a stalemate essentially um which was absolutely amazing so uh for for the for uh the folks at home we can do a quick rundown of the list we have an apothecary biologus was with blade driven deep so the unit he attaches to gets infiltrator you put him with marnius calgar and a six-man aggressor squad you get 10 infiltrating aggressors with advanced shoot and charge thanks to marnius calgar um you can give them plus one, an additional plus one ap outside 12 inches with um the stratagem i forget the name of now from vanguard uh, strike force so they can go to ap2 uh with lethal hits thanks to the, the apothecary and then potentially rerolls if you're shooting your oath target a lot of damage out of that unit and a lot of potentially sort of forward pressure you can alpha strike your opponent right off the table very quickly with that on top of that, Marnius Calgar gets UCP for free, and this this the detachment's very CP hungry because it wants to use a bunch of reactive effects um, to muck up with your opponent. Uriel Ventress gives an infantry unit uh, deep strike. You can use that to give the Centurion Devastator to squad deep strike. They gain the deep strike ability at the start of the battle formation step throughout the entire game. So what that means is that you can actually if start potentially start the centurion devastator squad on the table and then use the um upy downy strat from vanguard uh strike force man i am i don't remember any of these strategies from chat i apologize uh i'm out of the loop right now um but you can return them into strategic reserve because they have the deep strike ability from uriel ventress they can then be deep struck uh on the first battle round even after the the world championships faq the world championships faq for whatever reason specified that strategic reservers that have deep strike can arrive from strategic reserve on the first turn if they started the game on the table so uh if you deploy them you can teleport them like up into an aggressive position blow something up on potentially the bottom of the first round which is nuts um we then have a uh, unit of company heroes that's for euro of interest to go into he himself is a pretty he's not he's no slouch in combat so he gets a pretty hardy unit that's just tough to kill they're just a billion wounds the uh, company heroes themselves are four wounds each with a uh, minus one to be wounded as long as they're attached to a captain so uh you get i think it's four models so you get 16 wounds plus the character to, to peel off an objective and the um the company champion in the unit has like six melee attacks i think they also get like a pretty cool heavy bolter that's um sustained two i believe so randomly they can do some some serious damage too it's like a nice unit um they're they're a little weird 95 points is a lot for a unit without an invulnerable save but uh minus one to wound and, and a billion wounds is pretty okay uh we then have a bunch of eradicator squads that we can use to problem solve um a bunch of inceptor squads i think this is largely kind of um a uh, concession to indirect fire you have to be able to deal with whirlwinds and you have to be able to deal with uh, night spinners if, if you want to be able to beat the eldar and space marine matchups and so inceptors can just drop in they're super hard to screen out it's almost impossible to get an inceptor squad outside 18 of your um, artillery unless you have infiltrators or some other deep strike denial uh, and then they're just going to come in you're going to oath that thing you get full rerolls hit and wound because they're twin linked and they will almost assuredly kill one of those vehicles they probably will die on the swing back but at least you're getting rid of the the targets that your army has trouble dealing with and from there the aggressors and the centurion devastators can, can clean up uh we also have another one with assault bolters just to to do actions and stuff three scout squads for utility and a calidus assassin for the same reason um yeah this list is super sick <laughs> um i absolutely love it chat i absolutely love it it's super duper cool Vanguard being sneaky? Hell yeah. Sneaky with Gravis and Centurions, which is, you know, the the sneakiest Space Marines, as we know. <laughs> uh, 
Um, <laughs> but it's funny if you were capable enough to play it. Just practice as much as Don John Lennon. Easy. Just play as many games as he does, which is like probably one every day or whatever. <laughs> Um, can we party? Can we peek at Space Wolves results? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can. I'm gonna go through the top eight or so here, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll do some digging for sure and, and take a look at uh, individual results. Absolutely. Resiel owns everything in the list, dude. Put it on the table, bro. That seems sweet. All right. Um, now, obviously, we also have some other, you know, uh, I think not too, not too surprising finishers. Really good players with really good factions. Two Chaos Space Marines, Eldari uh, off the back there. I do talk about Ludovic's list uh, and Lachlan's list, actually, in uh, my video I released earlier today because Manny Chima beat uh, both those players. Um, and John Lennon beat Boris Mishev, I think. So there you go. Um, Valentin Schefter came in sixth place playing Necrons. And I think Necrons, um, I, I wanna talk about some of the results of Necrons because I, I, I believe that, if I remember correctly, Necrons had a kind of staggering win rate uh, over the course of the weekend. Not a high play rate, but the players who did take them were good with them and um, were also able to succeed. And I think part of it is that, uh, and, and this and this might also kind of speak to the reason the Chaos Space Marines did well. I think a lot of people were worried about like the real raw stat checklist, things like Iron Storm, Things like um, Eldar to a lesser extent, right? Where they just have like these big Wraithguard bricks and these big avatars of Kane and stuff like that. You have to pin down and then you have to kill. And so they took a lot of this like technical shooting where it's it's like high mobility, kind of like um, uh, sort of like this shooting that like Nicola dimes you, but has like a good uh, jack of all trades profile. You know, I'm thinking of things like uh, you're, you're playing in, you're playing in uh, Eldar, you're taking Death Chesters or whatever, where they have like a sustained devastating weapon that can shoot infantry and get a bunch of hits or shoot vehicles and get a bunch of wounds. Um, but they don't take the raw damage output required to clear silver tides and that's the same thing that happened with a lot of the chaos space marine lists You're, most of the players that manny played against did not have the attacks necessary to kill his accursed cultist units at least not before they lost on primary and that's what happened in a lot of his games as far as i saw is that he would just swarm the board with 60 of course cultists and then your you know his opponent would kill two of them but the third one would just string between three objectives and score him 15 points of primary every turn and that was it that was the game um and uh, I, I also have a sneaking suspicion that's what's happening with these Necron lists because we're seeing these Silver Tide Necron lists coming back out of the um, coming out of the woodwork and just being like, hey, oh, Eldar is going to take a bunch of Bright Lances? Okay. They can't kill 20 Necron Warriors ever, so they're just going to lose. <laughs> um, and I think that that was, uh, that was, pretty, that was pretty smart, obviously. Um, not to mention the fact that I think there's a lot of people who have been on Necrons for a long time in 10th edition and are very good with them. And I'm a really good player with Necrons, honestly. I'm, like, uh, pretty scared of them. Um, this one's called the mini game. I wonder if the mini game is uh, can you kill a Necron warrior unit? And the answer is generally no. <laughs> um, this one's running a Catacomb Command Bar, so plus one OC bubble. That's cool. So we get OC three Necron Warriors. Hot diggity damn. Uh, one... Uh, Veil of Darkness Chronomancer, Illuminor Seraz, so plus one uh, save and minus one AP in the to the bricks. Um, uh, Emotech the Stormlord for some free CP. You got to use that for reactive reanimations. Uh, Orican the Diviner for an inborn save on one of them and a Technomancer alongside, for the other one, obviously, uh, alongside a Transcendent Catan. Uh, you could also put the Chronomancer in the other one, I guess. He does give you minus one to be hit, which is pretty solid. Uh, that dude's actually, like, unironically kind of sweet. Uh, two units of Necron Warriors. Uh, two units of Crypto Thralls to go in them. So each one of them is getting... Um, I don't, do we have a Lord for the second one? I guess we just have Immotech, right? And then everything else is a Technomancer. Interesting. So just one of them gets a Lord, the Lord uh, attachment. But that's, that's okay. Uh, one unit of Triarch Praetorians. Holy crap. All right, hold up. <laughs> Uh, I didn't even realize we were Triarch Praetorians in this list. Dude, that's wild. When is the last time we see Triarch Praetorians in any list? Not to mention top eight in the World Championships. Are you kidding me? Dude, these World Championships were hype as fuck. Let's go take a look at Triarch Praetorians real quick. They are the um, the alternate of the Lich Guard kit that comes with um, a, a ranged attack and a jump pack. 
but taking those those guys are they're they're sort of a short range flying unit, which is a little bit weird. Um, and they're sort of like mediocre, both melee and range. Uh, and he took them with particle casters and void blades. So, uh, and we don't have a sovereign coronal. And I don't believe, and uh, someone can correct me if I'm wrong here. Uh, I'd have to go verify. I don't believe that anything can join them. But I could be mistaken. Uh, I'll just take a look. Can the Cryptex join Triarch Praetorians? They cannot. Uh, yep. I don't believe anything can join into Triarch Praetorians, which is a little bit funny. You'd think that a, like a Technomancer with the cloak would be able to, but I don't believe that the, they have any eligible leaders. Uh, and there's no Sovereign Coronal, so they're not getting any of the leader benefits. Uh, they can reroll charge rolls, and they can fall back and charge. They can't um, advance and charge or fall back and shoot, which is a little bit funny. Uh, they're taking the Void Blade, so they have each four Strength 5 AP2 one damage attacks. That's a solid melee profile. It's not... It's a high volume, so that's good. They're kind of a problem solver. They're only move nine, so not the fastest thing in the world. Um, but they do have deep strike, so we can rapid ingress them and then use them to kind of assault your opponent's backline. Uh, that gives the the list a little bit more reach than the classic style of um, the Silver Tide would normally do. Like normally, you're just sort of pushing Necron warriors out of your deployment zone, and maybe you have the one Veil of Darkness unit. But having an additional unit with a Triarch Praetorians that can that can threaten your opponent's backline seems kind of useful. And then they also have a 12-inch range pistol, Devastating Wounds Gun. That's pretty rad. Um, now, the unit is, uh, yeah, 24 points a model. They're relatively expensive. I guess they did get some big cuts, though, so they're not the most expensive thing in the world. Um, but uh, they are two wounds each, so that's not too bad. Yeah, so I, I imagine just using those guys as a backline harasser uh, in order to, um, in order to, um, uh, be able to sort of support the Necron Warriors when they're doing stuff. Because the Triarch Praetorians, you can, um, if your opponent is, is, you know, kind of preoccupied fighting the, the Warrior Bricks, and they leave an opening for a screen, in the screen, or they leave just an opening, uh, where you're able to get an, an ingress and a move and charge into something, and a, a nine-inch move off an ingress is pretty good um then they can they can get some work done and they should kill you know there's there's basically any trash unit will go down to these guys there's uh there's no like 10 wound infantry unit that that will survive them generally speaking unless they have really really strong defensive stats would love some death guard talk yeah we talked about liam Bissell. um he did he did pretty well he he made it uh to top eight i think um in the uh event as well we talked about him on the uh the last video but we can touch on his list again because he did well um thoughts on mono nurgle demons um they're they're fine uh I don't, I don't think they're particularly competitive because they tend to be slow and pillow fisted, but they're good at sort of like dominating objective control. You can, you can play like a defense skew where everything's like toughness 11 plus with like super, super hard saves. Um, and that's okay. Uh, I think like coronate demons are, are generally going to be more effective, but you can make it work. It just probably be an uphill battle in some matchups, but not insurmountable. The granite, like Rodicus is pretty solid, and the granite clean one with the uh, four plus final paint is also good. It's strange that GW makes a rule for this tournament, and Ardmore makes a good list. the The rules were available before the lists were submitted. Chat. <laughs> the players were emailed a copy of the rules before the lists <laughs> before the lists were submitted. The, the everyone was everyone knew the uh, the interactions in question <laughs> beforehand. That's a, that's that's not drama. That's just good gameplay. <laughs> uh, is the next site just gonna be points or rules and units too? I believe it's just points, but don't quote me on that. I believe that they're doing rules only once yearly, um, and so the next one will just be points because they did rules in the next on the last one. All right. Well, this is just super cool. 
Uh, Valentin Schefter from Germany. Hot damn, dude. That is a six and two with Triarch Praetorian Necrons. That's so sick. Uh, Arnie over here. Um, you've probably seen Arnie on the channel before. Um, uh, if you watch, at least if you watch over on Twitch. Um, I think he and I have played a couple times. He's been in the Invitational a couple times uh, for T5S2. He's going, uh, what is this, 6 and 2 as well with Eldari. Good for him. Kyle McCord with Black Templars over here, number 8, rounding out the top 8. Uh, and this is a Gladius Task Force. I don't know if we talked about this list, but uh, it looks like it's relatively standard, although we do have a little bit of spice here. So we're taking an Apothecary Biologus with the Fire Discipline combo. So we're getting five up critical hits in Devastator Doctrine, and then he gives them lethal hits. We've talked about it like every single video, I think. Everyone's running this combo right now. Uh, and in one of the detachments in Space Marines that can do it. Multiple detachments have access to this. So um, uh, everybody's taking it. The, uh, we're taking a captain with honor vehement. So that's the standard captain who has finest hour. So he can, um, the honor vehement plus one strength and attacks and then, uh, plus two strength and attacks in devastator doc or an assault doctrine, excuse me. And then he can flip himself. He can, he can freak out for plus three attacks and devastating wounds. So he can, if he, if he finest hours in assault doctrine, he's plus five attacks. I think he attacks 11 times. Um, does that sound right? Does that sound right to anybody? 11 attacks? It's a lot. The answer is a lot. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can pull out my uh, codex right now. Oh, actually, I forgot. Guys, Wahapedia has Space Marine rules on it. I don't have to look at my codex anymore. We can just we can just click a couple buttons and then look at the most updated version of the Space Marine Captain. It's always funny because the Space Marine Captain used to be two day sheets, now it's one. So, who knows what they do now. Uh, um, here we go. What is he taking with him? A fist. Oh, okay. So the fist is only five. So if he had the sword, he would be up to 11. The fist is only five, but it goes to strength 10. Strength 10, AP2, two damage with 10 attacks. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> That's solid right there. That's uh, I'll buy that for a dollar, as they say. <laughs> All right, I love it. That's cool. Uh, plus high martial Hellbrecht. Um, who remembers the list by the way that had like nine, like nine captains? It was like. Because all the first board captains and the Primaris captains in the index all had finest hours, so you could take multiple of them, and then you also took Gravis captains, which had two weapons. So you took like nine space room captains and land raiders. Amazing. Uh, high martial Hellbrecht. Who is he attaching into? Uh, probably one of these Sword Brethren squads. All right, fair enough. So he jumps into the Sword Brethren. We have three units of five. Those guys, it looks like, are jumping in Black Templars and Pulsars. So we get that cute, cute, cute multi melta for five points on the top. Uh, plus the Aggressor Squad for the Apothecary Biologus and Eradicator Squad. Double Inceptor Squads. One with Self Vultures, one with Plasma. Land Raider Redeemer. Um, oh, maybe that's for the Sword Brethren. Okay. Wait, who goes into the... What am I missing here? Oh, the Aggressor Squad goes into the Redeemer. What am I talking about? Insane. Dude, I'm... <laughs> oh, man. You can tell I am still all nurgled up today. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so, they, so the Impulsors get the uh, Sword Brethren, and the Redeemer gets the Aggressor Squad, because it's the big enough to hold them. Uh, yeah, that makes total sense. So kind of a, um, it's a Gladius task force, but it's really taking that sort of Iron Storm style, right? Where it's just taking um, tons and tons of vehicles, making use of all those additional multi meltas, plus uh, all of the powerful infantry synergies that Black Templars have. Uh, Hellbrecht with the Sword Brethren squad is an absolute menace. That dude will just like wreck basically anything. Um, and then the rest of them just like sort of following up. It, it's always funny because it feels like Black Templar's lists. You get through the first couple waves of attacks. You're just like, all right, we got an Impulsor full of dudes dead. We got the Aggressor's dead. We got the Land Raider. It's fine. And then 10 more Sword Brother and pop out. And you're just like, oh my God, here we go. These guys, they never stop coming. They're insane. And then a bunch of Scout Squads for support. That's a sweet list too. Space Marines are so cool right now, chat. I love them. Can you swap war gear from game to game? You cannot. You can only swap nothing. Uh, just just um, just battle formation stuff. So just like reserves and character attachments and vehicles, uh, tra transport, occupants, stuff like that. Uh, 
Um, there was a large team event in Ontario. Two admin players were in top ten. Yeah, that's that's cool. Good for them. Team events are uh, team events are a whole different can of worms because they um, you can you can you you can take like sort of factions with very specific strengths and then um, and then give you try to get yourself matchups where those are those are um, uh, good good matchups for them. <laughs> I forgot how to speak today. Jesus Christ. OG eighth edition character spam. Don't miss Tau Commanders. Character spam is back in a big way, honestly. There was some discussion I remember uh, uh, I saw recently about like people looking for hero hammer lists. Oh man, oh, there's so many. I think you could like you could play like a really character like a really character heavy Space Marine list. I don't want to say focus, but really character heavy. Um, you could like Thousand Suns play infinite characters. Uh, Death Guard play infinite characters. There's so many factions that just could like put characters in every single unit right now. Um, and even a lot of armies that are playing characters without attachments in them, too. Uh, by the way, Inky's here to say hi to chat. Inky, say hello to the chat. Oh, let's go back to the regular. Say hello, Inky. You don't want it. She's like, I just... I just want to sit on your leg awkwardly and put my tail in your face. That's all I want to do. Both went 5-0. and oh. Good for them. Admech aren't too bad, honestly. Hello. They're certainly not the best army in the game, but they, um... But they are, uh... Definitely not, like, as bad as I think the internet makes them out to be. Um, let me know if you can hear my fan in the background chat, by the way. My, uh, my heater's on, because it's a little cold today. So I hope it's not picking up on the microphone too bad. Um, alright, we wanted to talk about Liam Vissel's... Oh, Jack Harpster also went, went, uh... Uh, what is this? Jesus. He went 5-1-1 one, one with Black Templars? Wow. Did he, like, draw himself out of the top 8? That's insane. Suck, sucks to suck a little bit. Um, a 50-50 draw is, like, nuts, though. <laughs> That's so difficult to get. Honestly, a draw is more impressive to me than a win in, in 40k right now, in 10th edition 40k. Uh, because it, I mean, it means, like, the matchup was so close, right? It's it's like out of out of two hundred points, like two hundred possible like combinations, right? You, you got the one, <laughs> you got one of them that was that was the same. That's like nuts. Or a, a spread of two hundred, I should say. You got the two numbers that were the same. No fan noises, awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you, chat. Um, so this one is running pretty similar similar stuff actually. Double captains this time. Let's go, dude. Double captains, one with artificer armor, one with honor vehement, impulsors, aggressors, eradicators, inceptors, land raider, redeemer, sword brother, and sword brother, and sword brother, and scouts, scouts, scouts. Okay. It's like the same list. It just takes double captains instead of. Um, hold up. Did I click on it? Are they literally playing the same list? Or did I click on the same list twice? No, no. They're literally playing the same list. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> Black Templars have found what works, chat. We figured it out. <laughs> Siegler originally beat him 51 to 50, but they changed it to a draw? Interesting. I know Siegler got sick day two. That might have been what it was. That was unfortunate to hear, by the way. I know a lot of people were sad to, to see that he wasn't going to be continuing uh, later on in this tournament. But I hope he feels better. Heart goes out to that guy. That sucks. That sucks so hard to be like, at this event that's like so prestigious and so high like pressure and just be like, well, I got food poisoning or whatever. <laughs> like, nothing I can do about it. That's That sucks. One of the captains hits as hard as Halbrecht. Yeah, the Honor Vehement guy goes insane, right? Absolutely not so. Space Marine captains rule. Um, all right, so we can talk about Liam, Vessel, Liam Vessel's list again. We talked about it last week, but let's dive in once more. Liam Vessel over here at 7-1. Uh, 7-1 with Death Guard. How is that possible? He didn't He didn't lose on double elims? Oh, did he not uh, make it to elimination stage? Is that what happened? It seems like, yeah, because this he lost in group stage. Uh, I see. 
So the 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 event format, by the way, chat, and I uh, don't know if I saved a copy of the uh, rules here. Oh, I did. Look at me go. The event format, just for the folks who um, are unaware, is everyone gets uh, is important when discussing uh, these win rates. Um, everyone gets put into a, a 24 player pod. Uh, a pool, and then that's the group stage. You play five games. The number one player from each pool goes and plays uh, the double elim championship bracket. So this is the elimination stage. Otherwise, if you don't, you just go play for points for your for your country team. And so you play three more games, and then you're done. Um, however, the championship bracket, because uh, it's double elimination, if you lose a game you can still win you just have to go play the other losers and then one person gets out of that that bracket and uh gets back in to play the finals basically so you could be playing up to seven games if you like go uh like one like win win lose play two more lose again i think uh, and then your opponent gets to the finals. So you could play up to se yeah, you could play up to seven if you if you lose lose win the entire, um, or if you win uh, lose early win the entire um, redemption bracket and then get back up to finals. Um, if you win all your games like your Manny Chima, then you just play three and then you're good to go. There it is. Um, so what happened here? It looks like is that uh, Liam lost in the group stage. Unfortunately, he, he looked like he was really high placing in his pool, but not top. So he didn't make it to championship bracket. So he played three more games, won all of his world bracket games. So those are all going into the pool uh, for Bel for Team Belgium. And then um, that's where he's at, which is why he is uh, top 10, but not in eliminations. Uh, so running three Biologus Feature Fires, two Foul Blight Spawn. Um, Two units of 10 Plague Marines, two units of five Plague Marines, three Chaos Rhinos, so we can put two units of 10 in one of each, and then the two units of five in the other one. And we have uh, enough characters for most of them. We can put Future Fires, we can put Blight Spawn in the two big units and Future Fires in two of them, and then one Future Fire into one of the other smaller units if we want to. Uh, plus three Two units of Nurglings, uh, three Plague Burst Crawlers, three War Dog Brigands. So I think people are coming coming sort of down to the the conclusion that the the, the best things in the list um, are the Biologus Future Fire and Plague Marines. Especially point, post their their points decrease. They're now 16 points a model, which is like sort of nuts cheap for like a T5 Tactical Marine that gets you like decent shooting. They have Melted Guns and Plasma Guns in the unit uh, and insane melee. They have a ton of... They have uh, five heavy plague weapons, which is three attacks at two damage. They only hit on fours, but you can give them sustain two, and they critical on fives. So uh, they they hit like a million times more than they attack, generally speaking. <laughs> um, or at least, at the very least, they should like conf convert like 100 to 120% of their initial attacks. Um, statistically, although it is really spiky because you got to roll fives and sixes. Uh... And then those are also lethal, so they just enforce you on saves immediately. The amount of damage from a Plague Marine unit is absolutely nuts. Uh, and then from there, we've taken basically only Plague Burst Crawlers, and then everything else is an ally. So we're not really focusing that much on um, the other Death Guard units, which are kind of, you know, mediocre, I guess. But we are taking War Dog Brigands, who... Um, the nice thing about Death Guard is that their their contagions are sort of non-specific. You don't need to be a, a, a Death Guard model to benefit from the Death Guard contagions because they debuff enemies. So you're giving them minus one toughness, minus one save, and the Wardog Brigands benefit from that. You can also potentially be giving them minus one weapon skill, and that combos with the Nurglings because the Nurglings will give you minus one to hit. So you'd be minus two to hit in melee, and it doesn't matter who you're attacking. As long as the attacking unit is not a monster or vehicle, um... They're going to be hitting, like, Warrior Brigands and stuff on fives and sixes, which is nuts. Oh, hello, camera. Where are you going? Oh, you're getting pushed by my cat. I see what's up. Uh, was there any prize support for first place? Yeah, so the, um, the, their, their new Weta, the new Weta Workshop statue, uh, they did sort of discuss it on stream. Um, I don't know if there's anything on top of this, but, uh, 
the new Weta Workshop statue of Captain Titus for Space Marine 2. The winner gets, here is the, here is the picture, by the way. Uh, I just pulled it up on Wormwood Community so everybody can look at its glory. Uh, the winner gets the f serialized first one of these, which is kind of cool. And apparently this thing is massive. Uh, to buy one, it costs you a cool $1,200. Uh, and uh, it's like, it's like, it's like three feet tall. It's apparently enormous. Um, and the winner got one of those. Please don't knock my stuff off my desk kitty cat <laughs> trying to make death guard work without the war dogs and nerglings because there's none around yeah i think you can uh i mean i've seen and i've played against lists that, that run um uh, the, the nerglings are really good like i would i would i would recommend trying to source nerglings from somewhere even if it's just like glowing raisins to a base you know what i mean um in order to 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 make nerglings work because nerglings are incredibly strong like for a deploy deep strike they're super cheap uh they're excellent for secondaries they give you a little bit of like kind of mobility that that death guard don't necessarily have but i don't think you necessarily 100 percent need um the war dogs to, to be able to compete i think they're they're definitely helpful because they give you some additional range attacks that you don't normally have but i've seen lists that play additional uh uh plague marine rhinos um, I've seen up to like 40 Plague Marines in Rhinos is pretty effective. Um, I've also seen lists that run um, Death Rod Terminators. You can take like Typhus, you can take Lords of Contagion. Uh, those guys in Death Rod Terminator units deep striking around the table is amazing. Typhus himself is just good by himself. You can just take him. Uh, he's like a he's a single deep striker, so you can he can do actions and be a good secondary scorer. Um, and then also he can do his smite in the shooting phase even if he's doing actions or doing something else. So he, you could just drop him down and like blow up a character, like a lone operative character from 18 inches away. And there's like no counterplay, right? Unless if he's not screened out, he just does it. Uh, as long as you don't roll a one, <laughs> just don't roll a one and blow his own head up basically. The statue is going to be worth so much money. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that for sure. The serial is number one. Definitely. But I, I mean, it's Manny Chima though, right? Like, is that guy gonna sell this thing? Probably not. <laughs> That's going in the Glasshammer Gaming like vault. <laughs> it's in the background of all of his videos from now on. Like, that's a hell of a trophy, dude. Oh yeah, I won the world championships. My trophy is a is a three foot tall Space Marine. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right, chat. Um, so yeah, that's Liam Vissel's, uh, Death Guard. I really like how Death Guard have evolved. I think they've moved from being kind of like the, the face mashy, um, like Mortarian lists. There's a lot of lists that were running like Mortarian, Mass, Terminators, uh, and they've, and they've, they've kind of settled into the Biologist Preacher Fire build. Um, these things are actually just like sort of nuts once you post, post, uh, uh, what's the word? Um. Data Slate update, and they got cheaper. They do so much damage, it's crazy. They have a blast, a two damage blast weapon by themselves, and then they uh, can also throw grenades for free once per game. So, uh, and they can all do it at the same time. So you can you can potentially be grenading up to four times if you have enough stuff in in range, which is insanity. Uh, and then they also throw their grenades. They get lethal hits. They give um, five plus criticals to the unit. So they just like everybody just gets massacred. It's pretty cool. Ask for anything but a space marine. Dude, there's a Hormigant in the base. Just take Captain Titus off, throw him in the garbage. You don't need that guy. And you just uh, you just have a Hormigant that's being stepped on by a, a ghost, I guess. Um, all right. Moving on. What should we talk about? This is, it looks like uh, top 16 is like the, the place where Eldar go to die. Oh my God. <laughs> just a great graveyard of, of Eldar players who... Uh, Lost the people who teched against Eldar. That'll happen. That'll happen. Uh, Jeffrey Kalodner, who we did see do pretty well with Adeptus Sororitas, coming in, rounding out the top 16 here with Sisters. Let's go. And let's talk about what he is bringing today. Uh, he named all of his characters, which is great. I appreciate that. That's cool. Um, 
Running in a magic fire uh, 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 with litanies of faith. Junith Eruita for some sweet, sweet CP. Morvan Val, uh, a Palatine with the Blade of St. Eleanor. St. Celestine, as well as one, two, three Battle Sister squads. Two Immolators. Oh, excuse me. Um, one Retributor squad with multi Multas. Two Castigators. Uh, two Mortifiers, individual Mortifiers. Alongside a big unit of. Uh, Paragon War Suits, the Cog Breakers. Don't you go dressing up as a steampunk friend here. We're going to break your cogs. Um, for Morvan Vault to join. Seraphim with Hand Flamers and a unit of Sisters Novitiates uh, with two Death Cult Assassins and a Kalidus Assassin. Now, the Novitiates, I believe, are where the... Um, uh, are where the... Uh, Palatine goes into now. Because I think that they do give buffs to the Palatine. If I remember correctly. I'm going to look at their data sheet real quick. I'm sure somebody in chat is going to be yelling at me, telling me exactly what uh, Sisters Novitiate do. I believe I can find their data sheet. Jesus. Where yet, Sisters Novitiates? Uh, 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 this is embarrassing. Maybe I passed it like a dingus. I probably did. Whatever. Well, Hapedia will save me. There we go. Um, okay, yeah, so they get, um, they get reroll, advance, and charge, and then, uh, full hit rerolls on an objective, and the Palatine herself, uh, grants, uh, lethal, so you get full hit rerolls into lethal hits. So with the novitiate weapons, you get a couple chances to to swing into um, like random lethals, I guess. But then you get uh, the opportunity to reroll the Palatine's attacks herself, so you get more opportunities. Because what you want to be doing uh, is sitting her next to um, the Triumph, which I guess we're not playing today, which I, is fair, I guess. Um, what you, what you oftentimes want to be doing is converting all of her hit rolls and then um, pouring Miracle Dice into the wound rolls because uh, the, you're using the Palatine's ability to deal mortal wounds uh, in addition to normal damage. So if you can um, access automatic wounding from, from her, uh, then you're going to be getting uh, potentially four or five mortal wounds. I believe the blade... Gives her plus one attack. Yeah, a plus one attack, strength, and damage. Um, so you can be, you can give her uh, up to six attacks if you have an, if you're able to miracle multiple times, which I don't believe this list is, then you can um, get up to six mortal wounds in addition to a bunch of four damage attacks, which is kind of nutty. Uh, it is a little bit weird. Um, I, I guess the lethal hits also trigger the ability because the, the wound is scored automatically, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. Uh, it's not a, it's not, it's not checking for a wound roll. So I imagine that that's, that, that, that combos, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, no high ranking on nids. Yeah, yeah. The uh, Tyranids, I don't think, did very well this weekend for um, for the World Championships. Manuel Valera, congratulations on a 4-1 finish. Was that at the World Champs or was that somewhere else? Um, we're talking about world championships today right now. Um, all right. Yeah. So this one, I think we, we talked about, uh, Jeffrey Cotter's list before, but I think, uh, it's mostly, 
sort of just just leaning really hard into the um, MSU style of sisters to generate a billion miracle dice with a ton of individual individual units, uh, and then using um, kind of like the 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 kicker units, the the multi melta squads, the retributor squads, and the um, tanks to like kind of uh, finish out that damage. Especially uh, with alongside all the emulators, we can split the battle sister squads up into like a multi melta and melta gun squad plus the the regular sister squad that can stand on objectives, and then the emulators can fire support the little units to get the wound reroll. So those are individually really powerful. And then if you convert any of the melted damage, you can miracle it to do a bunch of a billion damage. Um, and the same thing for the retributor squad as well. We don't have a dialogus for any of these, right? So we don't get auto sixes on our dice. Um, it's interesting because this list feels like it's taking a triumph of St. Catherine, <laughs> but I don't think it is. Uh, we got Judith instead, basically. Maui Fundraiser GT. Well, congratulations on 4 and 1. That's awesome. Good old, uh, good old Vanguard Onslaught, dude. That detachment's, that detachment's legit. I gotta play more Vanguard Onslaught. I was having fun with, uh, I was rocking the Warrior Spam list we talked a couple weeks ago. I played on the stream a couple times. That list is fun as hell. Uh, I'm probably gonna play a Gene Stealer Spam list at some point in the not too distant future. Thought Endless Worm would be good. I mean, I also, I said that literally when the, when the, the <laughs> thing came out, but like, man. It feels so miserable to play. Uh, I don't, I'm not really that interested. <laughs> I, don't, I think a lot of people aren't that interested in playing it. Just from like a, from like a, a play enjoyment standpoint. <laughs> Went forward to with Grey Knights at the narrative. Got to kill a warrior on Titan. Dude, all right. Let's talk about the narrative real quick. We'll, we'll, we'll take a little bit of a segue here. Um, because I read through the, the Warhammer community, like wrap up article on the narrative. Uh, here it is. Let me, let me, well, let's, let's bring it up here real quick. And it seems like the, the coolest thing. Um, I don't know. I was like very impressed. Uh, so I don't know the names of all these people and I apologize if they're like big names in the community or whatever. But this lady was dressed up as, uh, they had a picture of her in the beginning of the event and I don't remember if it's on the article somewhere. Um, but she was dressed up as like an Imperial, um, like, person um and then she like slowly she her like cosplay changed over the course of the weekend everyone everyone's cosplay changed she was like slowly became possessed by a um a lord of change as the as the event went on that's that's fucking rad dude are you kidding me so like the these like characters who are in charge of the narrative games their their outfit was like changed based on what was happening in in the narrative campaign. That's so cool. Are you kidding me? Uh, and then like this um, this like inquisitorial uh, was this guy this inquisitorial stormtrooper guy like ended up getting gets like promoted to an inquisitor and like gets terminator armor and stuff at the end. Like that's just rad. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, it feels like it's real like Renfair energy, and I'm here for it. Uh, and also, I don't know, the tables were cool. I hope the games were fun. Um, I don't know anything about like the rules that they played with or whatever, or what was going on, but it just, uh, it's just good energy, dude. It just seemed really sweet. And uh, looking at all the pictures, like, sort of gave me, it really like brings me back to like when I was a kid and. These were the kind of games that, like, we would play in our in our minds, basically. Like, this is what 40K looked like in our head, even though we were playing on soda cans and stuff. And then eventually, like, we started to try to run bigger and bigger Apocalypse games where we would do, like, fancy terrain and stuff like that. Uh, it never really, you know, obviously it never got to this level. This stuff is, like, super cool, but it was pretty, it was pretty sweet. Um, also, all these guys, like, I don't know, they, they're, like, they got the uniforms on and stuff. <laughs> this dude's got his, like, Eldar bathrobe on. I appreciate that. This guy's got orc shoulder pads. They're like painted like his army. Man, just got into it. The narrative seems like it was actually rad. <laughs> Super duper cool. Next level cosplay, yeah. The the um the like cosplay as as a, a plot device is so cool. That's so cool. It's like 
They, and they also, I think they they posted this picture here. This is like one of the kill team, I guess, like sections, like segments of the, uh, uh, or combat patrol or something. Uh, yeah, it was kill team. Um, and like they they theme out the like, the hall for the the mode that they're playing in. So they're like, oh, it's a it's like a kill team in a space hulk or whatever. So we have like mood lighting and all the lights are turned down. And we have like all the the paneling and stuff in the corners. Like you're basically just LARPing and playing 40k at the same time. Uh, and clearly drinking like a bunch of Heineken or whatever, which I appreciate too. And and I think that that's pretty sweet, honestly. Um, like I'm not, you know, I don't know if that's like the facet of the game that I'm like as excited about playing into. But watching it unfold, at least in the in like the the snippets that Games Workshop gave us here, is like super duper cool. That's awesome. I love it. All right. Anyway, that was my aside. <laughs> About the grand narrative, because uh, I read through that article and I was like, oh, "Hot diggity damn, what a what a time to be alive." That's super sick. Um, all right, a lot of people wanted to take a look at the top Space Wolves players. Oh, Caillou went uh, top twenty-four with Tyranids. I believe that we talked about his list uh, momentarily on last week's video, but we can talk about it again. Um, he is running Gene Stealers in an invasion fleet, which I thought was interesting. Um, he's got Old One Eye, uh, Brood Lord with perfectly adapted so he gets a floating reroll um which is kind of interesting i wonder if that was like a point sink because i think the the brood lord if he's attached to gene sailors gets reroll once to hit anyway right so he's hitting on twos rerolling ones so he doesn't need hit rerolls and then he's twin link so he doesn't need wound rerolls so he's just uh he's just uh he's getting a saving throw reroll i guess oh you can reroll charges though that's pretty good actually all right i'll buy it i'll buy it um and then obviously according to the uh According to the uh, event FAQ as well, you could use the Hive Tyrant Aura on Command Reroll, which uh, I've since adopted in my events, uh, even though it's it's so far divorced from rules as written, it's insane. Clearly, that was the intention, so there we go. Uh, so that makes the Hive Tyrant's Aura much better. And then you can get potentially two rerolls on, like, the Broodlords, uh, so, or m throughout the movement sequence of the of the Gene Sealer unit, which is effective at getting them up the table. Uh, we have a Neuro Tyrant as well for the Enhanced Shadow in the Warp. One Biovore, the big Gene Sealer unit. Um, two Neuro Lictors, some Pyrovore, uh, one Pyrovore, two units of three Raveners, Ripper Swarms, some Carnifexes, two Exocrines, one Horror Specs, one Maliceptor. And that's the list. Pretty good stuff. Uh, nice to see the Raveners on the table. Um, I think I watched a couple of games of Tyranids over the course of the weekend, and the Raveners were absolutely insane. Just like rapid ingressing and like stealing objectives and stuff was really cool. Just being able to right walk 10 inches and then go kill 10 idiots on an objective because they have seven attacks each randomly. Um, seems pretty useful. And for only 75 points, like that's a that's a hell of a trade right there. Buddy told me the rules were temp controlled to what the area you're playing is? What? Are you, really? That's nuts. That's like, that's another level. Is that is that true, or were they just did they just mess up with the thermostat? I heard that the streaming area was like scalding by the end of the weekend uh, for the competitive stuff, which is unfortunate. Which I guess is that is what happens when you have a bunch of high power lights in one area. And then I, it's probably a contained area. It has to be, like, off in the corner so it's not, like, in a high traffic zone and then, like, near an Ethernet port. So it's, like, really restrictive. It felt kind of unhealthy. But that's insane if they, like, if they if they changed the <laughs> they changed the temperature based on the area. That's nuts. The desert rooms are really hot. Man, did they like put an air humidifier into like the jungle area or whatever? <laughs> That's super rad. Oh my god. I went to a science museum a couple weeks ago and they had like a they had like a, an exhibit on glaciers and there was they had a, a an honest to god um like 10 foot tall block of ice in the exhibit. That was like melting in front of you like it was just they just had a big block of ice and so everyone's like really cool and then everyone's putting their hands on it and i was just like all right i'm good but uh it was also 
put you in the mood, you know? You're like, all right, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm in the North Pole and uh, the, the glaciers are crumbling around me. That's super sick though. That's really awesome. I mean, kudos to the Grand Narrative team because that sounds amazing. Rezio owns 40 Gene Steelers. Can we make some type of useful jank out of it? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, we talked about a list a couple weeks ago that won with 30. You can't play 40 anymore, which is a little frustrating. As the proud owner of, like, 80 of them. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little sad, but, you know. Maybe someday we'll get a detachment that allies with Brood Brothers and we'll be able to take pure straight Gene Steelers and regular Gene Steelers in one list. And then we can go. That would be cool. Mm, 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 mm. Um, all right. So we also wanted to take a look at Space Wolves uh, as we wrap up our um, discussion about the World Championships. Uh, so we have... Uh, it looks to me like Florian Schmidt is top Space Wolves. I guess I can literally just search for Space Wolves. Nope, I can't. Just kidding. Get wrecked, I guess. Um, so Top Space was being at 33rd place. Inky's back, by the way. Love to, love to be able to put Gene Zero's or uh, Tyranus of Juice Circle. Yeah, it's crazy that you can't. It's uh, it's a, honestly a travesty. I like the, 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 the like, um, ally mechanics that they have right now they're like so simple they're like by the way you don't share any keywords so outside of the one the, the stupidity with fucking dumbass uh eldar because they accidentally gave drukari the eldari keyword um outside of that nobody gets detachment abilities you're like okay what else happens do i lose my stratagems or my psychic powers or whatever and they're like nah it's fine um which is amazing i love that uh like i don't i don't know what the exact reason was like maybe was there like a balance problem i don't know um i could i could maybe understand that there would like be like like biovores are like too good swapping in to other factions maybe or like you know reductus saboteurs and tyranids could be really strong but no idea no earthly idea chat Battle line, endless multitude gene stealers. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, we just uh, you use the stratagem to regen D three plus three gene stealers back to your unit. <laughs> Seems fine. What's the worst that could happen? All right, let's talk about this list. Florian Schmidt is running a Vanguard Spearhead. That's sick. All right, already off to a good start. We have Bjorn the Fell Handed and a Phobos Librarian and a Combi Weapon Lieutenant with Shadow War Veteran, which is a once per game vect on an enemy stratagem. Increases the cost of a battle tactic stratagem by one. Uh, from there, we are focusing almost entirely on Centurion Devastator squads. All of them with twin last cannons. So it's just a D6 plus one damage last cannon, but it's twin linked. And we have Centurion Missile Launchers, which is another D3 damage um, weapon on top of that. So we have the ability to uppy downy all these guys. We can put them in a strategic reserve and then pop them off the table edges to shoot people. Uh, two units of Fenrisian Wolves. One Gladiator Reaper, uh, three Inceptor Squads, two Plasma Exterminators, one Assault Polter Squad, one Infiltrator Squad, and two Scout Squads alongside the Kalidus Assassin. So rocking uh, all three Vects, holy crap. Three of them. Three Vects, chat. That's nuts. Uh, I hope you don't have a single stratagem that you really want to use and your army's based around because you will not be able to use it <laughs> more than one time. Oh, uh, you used it once? All right. I will vect it and again and a third time. Get stuffed. And if you have two you want to use, they're going to be like, double vect on one, vect your command reroll, and you'll be like, great. This, this is fun. I enjoy having CP. I'm going to have so many CP to use for heroic intervention later in the game. Um, <laughs> that's absolutely insane. Uh, and then, oh, it is a six man of Inceptors, so we do get the big problem solver. We should call this the problem solver squad chat. You're just like, all right, worst case scenario, I have a six man plasma Inceptor squad. They're going to drop down, they're going to full reroll, and do three damage per shot, and everyone's going to die. They're just going to 
You're just gonna average like 18 damage to whoever they shoot at. Here we go. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Again, these like these Vanguard Strike Force lists are uh, Vanguard Spearhead lists, I should say, are um, super cool. They are uh, super technical. We have the Infiltrator Squad. That's good protection against enemy Inceptors because they're uninteractable by Inceptors. Um, that don't that don't um, do that thing that they do. Rapid Ingress. So uh, you can try to protect your home objective with that, which is a big deal. Or you can protect like your important units, right? If, if we have, uh, if we're surrounding Centurion Devastators with Inceptors, with Infiltrators, the Inceptors can't get into them and just like blow them up in one go. Um, I, I would be surprised if we don't see more Deep Strike Denial effects like that in moving on into the future. Just because Inceptors, it seems like almost every single Space Marines army is running through triple Inceptors. Um, it's not quite as dire as it was when you needed to take them against Gene Stealer Cults. But it's pretty close. And I think uh, having anti-inceptor protection is a pretty big deal right now. Not to mention not not to mention the fact that the uh, the Phobos Librarian is just good. He gives the whole unit loan operative, so you get like a, a pretty you get a six model unit that can't be shot at, which is a big deal. And then he himself is he's got a devastating wound smite, so he himself can like kill some dudes, which is pretty solid. Problem is, Inceptors is all the good keywords and three inch deep strike completely free. Yeah, I mean, yes and no. I think Inceptors, they, they are probably too cheap. Um, any any unit, in my opinion, that you windmill slam like three of into your list probably needs at the very least a points hike. So I'm looking at you, the entirety of the space, Chaos Space Marine Codex. Um, Inceptors do something different in Space Marines that Space Marines don't really do themselves, which is give them that level of maneuverability. And Space Marines, they have to work really hard to get that, which I, given the fact that the army is generally speaking like of average or below average like speed, essentially, um, outside of obviously like Storm Lances and maybe some Gladius Task Force builds, they, um, they, they have a little trouble kind of like interacting with stuff on the other side of the table. And I think that Inceptors fill that role nicely. I think they do it too efficiently. So I could see them go up like maybe, maybe like two, three, five points a model somewhere in there. Um, but I think like Space Marines get hammered a little bit, I think, if you cut them super hard. They're also like they're already kind of an expensive proposition. Like if we're talking about these problem solver units, right? These these six man inceptor squads, they're going to be going for largely. Um, they they rarely survive the swing back, right? Uh, you usually can drop them in on a turn you threat saturate, so your opponent can't kill all of them in one go. So you'll get a second activation out of some of them, but the big squads will not likely not survive the turn after they come in because they have to come in. They're not very long range. They're coming in somewhere centrally located. And they're probably coming in to attack something that's in your back line. They probably are also trading dramatically down. Um, it's rare that one of these 220-point Scepter squads comes in and shoots something that's worth 220 points. They'll probably shoot like a Night Spinner, which is 40 points less than they are. Or a Whirlwind, which is like 100 points less than they are. Um, the, the best case scenario is I think they shoot like other aggressors which is like really, really good for them, but that's a really good profile matchup. So they're certainly too cheap, but um, I don't know if they're like, oh, the game's ending because of Inceptor squads. You know, that's just my opinion on it, though. I might be, uh, I might be biased because I think they're rad. <laughs> All right, chat. Oh man, my nose is really acting up. Should we? Uh, do we want to take a, a quick peek at any of the other? top placing factions uh, i'm going to take a quick look here at the uh, final placements on my own and then if anybody has any factions that they would like me to take a peek at let me know and i will do so Um, there was a Leagues of Votan, 26th place. Uh, uh, uh. Running an Einhear champion. Uh, two Einhear champions, excuse me. Wow, this is all compressed. This is hard to read. Two, three Einhear champions. Oh my god, holy crap, okay. 
Well, there we are. <laughs> I know a lot of people are running on here champion champ champions. They're only 60 points each. Let's pull their data sheet real quick. Um, they're only 60 points each, and they hit like an absolute truck. They are incredibly good, and they're difficult to kill. So, like, for 60 points, you get a 5 wound, 2 plus save dude. Uh, with potentially a 4 plus and vulnerable save if you're taking the weed field crest. Uh, or you can put them in unit unit and deep strike it, but... Uh, that's a little bit less useful because you can put them in hearth card and the hearth card can just snatch to do it anyway and they get their own weed, weed field crest. So normally you're a two plus five buff with five wounds. Um, you do uh, a bunch of mortal wounds on the charge and then you're also swinging, I guess they're taking the hammers, right? Yeah, you're swinging three strength 12 AP2 D6 plus one damage attacks. So three las cannon attacks essentially on top of the probably like average of three mortal wounds or so that you're doing. Uh, on the charge anyway. That's a lot of damage right there, my guy. Uh, for 60 points. That's the number you have to remember. That's only 60 points. And you can put them in um, in land fortresses, which is amazing. Uh, one unit of Hearthkin Warriors. One, two, three, Sagittors. Uh, who else is going in the Sagittors? Oh, Chthonium Berserks. Wow, this is melee all up in here. Holy crap. Okay. So we have... This is so hard to read. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, it's just everything's all squished together. So we have one Hecaton Land Fortress, six Hearn Companions, three Hearn Companions, three Hearn Companions. The one Land Fortress can fit the um, uh, champions. We do have two units of Hearthguard. Three units of Hearthguard. Oh, are we just putting the, the dudes in Hearthguard? They do have teleport crests. So I guess we're probably just putting the dudes inside the Hearthguard units. Okay, fair enough. Uh, a unit of Brokeer Thunderkin that can come off the side. So we're deep striking a crap ton, actually. We're deep striking uh, uh, 15 Hearthguard and three champions, probably. Um, plus, moving up the table with four Sagittors filled with Chthonian Berserks and uh, and uh, Hearthkin Warriors. Whoa. Whoa. This is aggressive. This is an aggressive Lisa Botan list. Holy crap. Uh, and then we're, that's all behind 12 Hearthkin Pioneers. So we're just like, we have a big unit of six that we're just going to basically like shove into our opponent's face and try to entirely body block them into the deployment zone. And that opens up space for you to, to like, you can prevent enemies like wide screening. And that opens you up to be able to deep strike all this crap into your opponent's arm, like back line. Like, or like right in their face. This is just rad, actually. There's just, I mean, it's, it's just leagues of OTAN stuff trying to beat you with math. They're just like, hey, can you deal with 12 Hernkin Pioneers and then also... 18 hearth guard that deploy in your like come in your deployment zone you're like probably not probably get one of those but not both and they're like well i guess you lose plus behind that there's there's two units of uh of um uh chthonian berserks in sagittors and there's a bunch of hearth guard like log like obsecking objectives away too that's super cool Every box and the special edition picture figure has an in here champion. <laughs> I guess that also helps. Everybody has one of them. I mean, when you only have like, I guess there's there's four like character slots for the um for Votan, right? Like you're eventually gonna get more of one of them, right? Sounds about right. Um, all right. Uh, um, Liam Hackett and Valentine had to play each other. Can we take a look at Liam's list? Yeah, absolutely. Let's take a look. Uh, um, let's actually take a peek at... Was that round five? It was, yeah. yeah. So it was a one-point game. Um, I did talk to Liam a little bit about this game. Um, there, uh, I guess there, there was like, um, there was like a question at the table about tactical draws. Um, according to Liam, he had drawn tacticals like, um, like end of his opponent's fight phase. His opponent had, had like stuff to resolve and hadn't done it yet. So he put his cards back in the deck and then picked them up again. And one of the judge questions him on him on it. 
Um, that's what he told me. I'm probably going to do a video about it because I think that's where there was, there was like a rumor going around that Liam Hackett got a warning for, um, like deck manipulation. And I, I think that's where that came from. So I'm probably going to do a video on it with, later on this week and talk about that. Apparently, according to him, that was this game and that secondary, that tactical objective draw lost him the game because he, he drew two un, unscorable tacticals. Like the, you know, the one in the one in, in 18 chance or whatever that you just draw like a, a zero on tacticals and he got it in that game uh, is, is what he said, sort of um, uh, did him in this time around. So his list, just make sure I have the right one here. Um, yeah, we talked about this one, I believe. Maybe we didn't. Um, he's running a Katan Shot of the Nightbringer, Catacomb Command Barge, uh, Seraz, Royal Warden, and a Transcendent Katan. We already talked about Valentine's list, right? They're both running double Necron Warriors. Um, and Valentine has the big deep striking unit. So he's got, um, a hyper material ablator overlord plus a chronomancer plus Oricon and a royal warden. Uh, that's pretty rad. And then I think the big the big game changer here, right, is like a katan shot of the nightbringer. Um, if you don't play your characters well, which I, to be fair, I imagine that both these players did. Uh, the Nightbringer is a very, like, he's difficult for these armies to kill. They can maybe kill them with enough, like, dedicated fire because they, they have their mass one damage and, on their output, so they don't really care about um, having damage. But I don't think they have enough output in a single turn to kill a Katan Shard, and then the Katan Shards are probably just, like, healing back up to full pretty quickly. So they're most of these armies, I think, are sort of impenetrable to each other. And uh, the Nightbringer is a good epic dual target to, to potentially try to kill the other, like, leadership units and the other Necron bricks. And once you kill those, they start to fall apart, right? Um, I think that it's sort of a fight between this dude and the Praetorian, Triarch Praetorians. That's the difference. And the Triarch Praetorians do seem pretty useful. Uh, they have a lot of base attacks and their Devastating Wounds pistols, which help as well. So they can, they can roll out 70 attacks in a turn, right? Because they have three pistol shots plus the four stabby stabs. So they're much better at clearing infantry than the other warriors. Um, and they also, they give the list a little bit more, uh, like, maneuverability. Because they're fast, they can fall back and charge, they can deep strike, like, do some rapid ingresses, try to steal an objective away, like, out OC a warrior unit on the tail end of the chain, if that makes sense. Um, so, I, I mean, I'm, that's all speculation, right? So I don't know exactly how it went, but I think those are those are, are all relatively in Valentine's favor. And then, uh, obviously, drawing bad secondary objectives will sometimes just lose you the game. Um, were there any guard lists that did well? We can take a quick, a quick peek at uh, Astromil's arm. It looks like... Yeah, 38, I think, is our top placing Militarum. Um, this was, I think the total player count, yeah, the total player count was 175, and within somewhere around the top 20%, we have most of the factions represented. I guess, like, very limited ad mac, right? Um, I don't know how Kasezi did. Well, I can't find him, so that's great. Thanks, BCP, you're the best. Um, but we have a lot of the other ones, uh, represented here. Even, like, Alex McDougal and Gene Sarah Cult's doing pretty well, even though that faction's really in the dumpster right now. I don't know how our uh, our many Adeptus Custodius players did. Uh, they, they also might be kind of out in the cold, but otherwise, most of the other factions represented, which is cool. Uh, so this is Eduardo... Um, this is Eduardo Rinaldi, right? Uh, yep, Eduardo Rinaldi from Italy, 38th. Running Guns, Ghosts, Lord Solar Leontes, 
a platoon command squad and Ursula Creed. Uh, only one Catachan jungle fighter unit. Uh, we do have Bulgren squads. Hell yeah. The Bulgren squads are underrated in my opinion. They're super duper tough. They have a feel no pain and minus one damage. That's like, that's, it's not quite Bjorn the fell handed where he's like five plus feel no pain and half damage. I think they're minus one and a six up feel no pain. Um, I'll just verify actually. Uh, but it, it is, it is like the, that's, that's the combo. That's like the two, the stack of two abilities that you really want in a unit that's going to be frontline. Um, because it means that you're, you have, yeah, yeah, they're minus one damage, six up feel no pain. Um, but it means that you have resilience against basically every, every style of incoming damage. Plus you can get an invulnerable save with, with brute shields. Um, yeah, they're just like for, for 80 points, they're just sort of like dead hard to kill, which is pretty sick. Um, so you can just send them out as like these little utility idiots and they're just like, go do a thing. And then your opponent has to dramatically overcommit to kill them. And that's attacks that aren't going into your hellhounds and aren't going into your, you know, your other frontline units. They're going into your tanks. Um, all your important stuff. Um, we then have, yeah, two hellhounds to get a big more cover. One Kasserkin squad, more scouting pew pew guns. Thank you very much. Uh, a Lehman Rust exterminator. Really? Huh. I guess when you're running double Hellhounds, the exter Exterminator doesn't feel too bad. Its base profile is very good, but its AP sucks. It sucks super hard. Um, I guess we can use, like, um, Fields of Fire to improve its AP. And that is Battle Tactic, so you can duplicate it with Ursula for free. Um... Because the Lehman Rust is a squadron model. Okay. So the, the combination between Hellhounds and Ursula Creed, you can get those guys to AP3, ignore cover. Or AP2, I think, right? Because they're base AP1, if I remember correctly. Let's take a look. Do, 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 do. Exterminator autocan. Yeah, 9, 1, 3. They get 8 shots at 3 damage, which is pretty good. That downside is AP0. Um, or AP1, which gets blanked by cover. They give everything else at plus 1 AP, which is nice. But if you you can get them to a pretty solid um, AP value themselves if you combo combo them, all right, I'll buy it. I've seen people run multiple exterminators. I think that's probably the mistake. The one exterminator as a um, as a support unit is pretty sweet actually. We're also running triple manticores. Damn. All right. So we can we can like we're basically like. We're basically like building a Tyranid list right here, where you just shoot them with all of the debuff guns and then blow them up with artillery, right? You're just like, all right, ignore cover. Minus one AP. S Scout Sentinels to ignore indirect fire penalty. Here comes Manticores. <laughs> then you explode. Do the Scout Sentinels also let you ignore cover? They don't, right? They just ignore minus the minus one to hit, if you can see them in 18. Sentinels, where is your data sheet? Here it is. Uh, yeah, reroll hit rolls of one and indirect fire. Okay, yeah. So we can we can wombo combo all of this artillery out into like sort of insane damage numbers. The Manticores go to strength ten, AP three, ignore cover. Hmm. Hmm. And they're really good against... Oh my god. This is like the Space Marine Killer right here. Holy crap. You put Gravis units on the table, and this thing just kills them. You get full hit rerolls against models with five or more units. Or units with five or more models. So if you play, run against like six aggressors, or like six Centurions or whatever, this guy's like... And then you, you combo off, obviously. This guy's like AP3... Ignore cover. So they're saving on sixes, maybe fives if they armor of contempt, and every converted hit kills a Gravis armor D model, and you're getting full hit rerolls. So you're probably shooting like D6 plus two, D6 plus three, depending on how big your unit is, um, at uh, rerolling. So you get like, what? Uh, like four hits, winning on threes. You probably kill like three Gravis guys. Holy crap. All right. <laughs> that's good. Like, that's when the, the Plasma and Scepter squads come in and blow somebody up and then, like, hope that they fail a bunch of a bunch of hazardous checks. So they're like, please drop me below five models. Please, God. Please. I just want to be four models. 
And only one guy dies, and the Manticore is like, oh, what's this? Plus one blast and full hit rerolls? Let's go! And just kills the whole unit. Uh, wow. All right, Manticore. Calm, calm down. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. I like this list, chat. So we have... Um, I don't believe we're taking any Chimeras, right? There's no dedicated transports in this list. So we just have the Catastrophe Jungle Fighters and maybe the Kazakhan to like, sort of like hold up the middle. But then we're using Hellhounds and uh, and the Exterminator to like debuff people and then blowing up up with a bunch of artillery. We have Basilisks, we got Manticores, we got Scout Sentinels to follow up. That's a lot of Daka right there, everybody. That's a good one. Add Mecha Uprising soon. Oh yeah. How are people feeling about the previews? I've taken a very a very cursory look at the previews right now, but I haven't had time to look too far. Noam Chomsky, how's it going? Nice to see you in chat. Whoa. Cool list from the World Championship, by the way, everybody. This has been sweet. The coverage was super awesome. It was super fun to, to watch all the games play out and like the drama was really cool. Not like the not like the internet drama. The internet drama was stupid, but the uh the um uh dramatic tension of the games is what i want to say it was super sweet also i'm not 100 percent sure how these uh placings work because some of these players are like four and four and some of these players are six and two and are lower ranked i guess is it i guess that maybe they get like bracketed based on their group stage performance or something oh yeah all these yeah okay the group stage performance is more um, more valuable. I see. It seems like the people who lost early tended to win last. Look at Anthony Videlli here. Oh, man. Lost two games in group stage, 300s immediately. It <laughs> just ripped out his his, uh, his poor elim or, um, world, world bracket <laughs> opponents just get steamrolled. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, my God. Did painting count for uh, for placement? I thought it just counted for um, yeah, the the national score. Cybernetic detachment just lets them get the army roll. Oh, that's lame. Give them something cool. What the fuck? Lukewarm on admec previous. Yeah, that's fair. That's we've had that before where like they just are like, oh, hey, guys, um, here are some previews and everyone's like, oh, this is this is crap. Th that was like the whole the whole 10th edition preview season, right? This whole spoiler season was like, wow, this is what an underwhelming rule for you to preview to me. Thank you. And then it turned out to be really broken. I think the only faction that people called out of being broken, which was clearly because it was was like Eldar. I think every everyone's um, uh, analysis was wrong on like every one of those factions. The Necron one was funny because the Necron one was like, "Wow, thanks for showing me literally nothing about this faction except for like it's really mediocre army roll," and then they just didn't show that every single <laughs> ability, <laughs> everything, every single ability in the faction uh, triggered off the army roll. This one is a little bit funky. So I wish, so so this is uh, exploratory maniple. Um, I read this earlier, but you, you you pick an objective. He basically makes your whole army into the the, the Phobos Lieutenant guy, right? Where you pick an objective, you get reroll wounds of, of one. Um, it's like, it's if you are within range of the objective or the target is within range of the objective. So you can do it off your own objective. And then like, uh, it's not an objective in no man's land. Oh, it's every, it's every command phase you get to choose a new objective. Oh, okay. Actually, no, that's actually pretty good. I thought it was one objective for the whole game, but you actually get to pick every turn. No, that's actually really good. That's a good detachment ability. Basically, just like getting reroll ones on uh, whatever you need. It's like an oath of moment for reroll ones, but better. It's pretty strong, actually. All right. I'll buy that. I like that. That seems really sweet. Uh, uh, uh. And then it get, they get, you get the Tau uh, re-embarking your transport strat. And you get the, I mean, if you're just the world leader strat. They're just, I honestly, so my hope is that, and they haven't been doing this so far, but my hope is that um, 
Kim's Workshop learns how to template rules <laughs> because I appreciate that they've been taking abilities that have existed in other detachments and are repurposing them because detachments don't have to have wholly unique abilities. They have to have a wholly, it's more interesting if they have a unique combination of abilities, but you can reuse abilities that already exist within the game. The issue is that a lot of the abilities that they've reused so far in 10th edition, and this has been the case for every edition of 40K ever, is that they, they reuse the ability, but then they don't reuse the wording of the rule. And so they all have slightly like slightly different effects that are like like oh if you use this on the bottom of the fifth battle round or whatever it suddenly doesn't do anything You're like why why does that one work differently i don't know because they didn't think about it um i hope that they fix that problem but uh in any case uh i like that they um are kind of like are repurposing these abilities and and it makes the game more comprehensible where you're just like oh what is your detachment do you're like oh i have the the sticky objectives on death stratagem and i have the get back in your chance with stratagem and you're, if you've seen if you played a lot you know played for a bit and you've seen that in like four other armies you're like oh i know those okay makes it much more much more parsable um cohort cybernetica oh you get a, da a damage blank though Ooh. <laughs> that's good that's a good enhancement right there though Space Marines go crazy for that shit. Mm. Deadly Demise. Uh, the bearer can automatically inflict mortal wounds once per turn. That's okay. I hope that's the cheap one. <laughs> that seems all right. It. I wish. It. It feels like you should be able. It, it's a. It's a range limited. Enhancement that only works when your vehicles die. It feels like it should maybe let you choose whether or not to deadly demise triggers instead of just that it does. That's a little weird. Um, I like the idea, but it seems a little weak. I don't know. Deadly demise is cool, but I don't. It's not that exciting. Uh, 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 one Legio Cybernetica, one objective marker, you get three plus ballistic skill and ignore cover, but it can only target units within range of the selected objective marker. That seems fine. Um, that's just effectively plus one to hit, right? Uh, and then if you, you can, it's plus one ballistic skill, so you can combo that with being heavy, right? So if you're in a position where you, you choose the, um, the doctrine to go into heavy, they go to the heavy doctrine. You can get to hitting on twos with the North cover. That's pretty good. It's all right. Saw people saying the auto return of release GSC wasn't broken. Um, I mean, what was it that broken? I don't know if it was that broken chat. The problem GSC's problem was never the fact that they came back to life. Well, I, all right, no, I, I, it was broken, but it was broken because it was too easy to come back. Uh, I think the people were like, people were like, oh my God, stuff can revive. That's insane. Not really. Cause it's all T3 infantry. The problem is that they could, the way that they worded it, you could revive them anywhere. Basically. Um, once it was fixed and it was fine. Like the first, the first change they made, the, the subsequent changes that they made were really silly. Most admec deadly demise for one or D three. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem, right? You're like, all right, aha, auto will explode, take two wounds, and your opponent's like, all right, you paid for that? Sure. You could have bought a gun. <laughs> your protect brace is like, aw. It's like so limited. It, it only works when it like. Not only is it only working in aura. If it was, if it was any any distance, like, all right, I could see that. Um. But it only works in an aura. It only works in a vehicle's destroyed. It only works if that vehicle has deadly demise. It only matters if that vehicle has deadly demise and is in range of enemies and is in range of enough friendlies that you're okay with it doing mortal wounds to them. So it's like the number of like hoops you have to get through for that to be for you for you to want to trigger the ability is like so minuscule. But every every detachment needs a really crappy enhancement that costs like ten points so that you can fill points, and that that feels like that one. I hope it. I hope they don't overvalue it. And they're like, you know what? Twenty five. You're just like, Jesus, stop. 
Would love to have an auto explode enhancement. It works. Oh my god, that'd be so busted. If it was in a detachment that didn't have Kareen, maybe. <laughs> uh, just being able to automatically windmill slam Kareen on the table. Oh my god. Ooh boy. That was uh, yeah. That would be that would be disgusting. I kind of wish. I don't know. Orcs should have an enhancement that just makes it more likely that their vehicles explode. Not automatic, but they're like, explode on a five instead of a six. And you're just like, hmm, all right. Um, but not once per turn, every vehicle. Uh, all right, let's look at the Necron one real quick. Hypercrypt Legion. I, we've, I already talked about this when it first got revealed, but man, does Hypercrypt Legion sound really good? Um, just like the amount of like uppy downies you get in an army that's already kind of slow and re and like really benefits from having uppy downies, uh, is super good. And then they just get the teleport assault from, from, uh, Grey Knights, which is sweet. This one for two CP lets you charge. Um, can you free strat that? Is it overlords that give you free strat? No, it's a strategic boy. Just kidding. Get wrecked. That's really good though. That's super strong. Cause the Eternity Gate is a is a um a super close deep strike, right? And you can do it off a monolith. So you can just deep strike a monolith. Uh, pull the Necron unit to the monolith, right? And then dimensional corridor them. I like that it, it required you to start on the battlefield. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. The Monolith has to start on the battlefield, not the mon not the Necron unit. Oh, okay. So you can get the Necron unit in reserve and then just run the Monolith up the table and then deep strike them. I gotcha. All right, I misread it. I'm sorry, chat. Uh, uh, that's, I mean, that's just really good. Can't, not, nothing else to say about that. That's a super strong strat. Uh, Necrons just generally being able to charge onto things is really strong because a lot of times, like, they don't really care about swingbacks and melee because they're just going to resorb in your turn. So, um, they're just engaging you, uh, and that seems crazy. It isn't super expensive, but that's what Immotech is for. He's probably going to get a new data sheet and be super sweet. Annihilation Legion is all about fighting on death, weirdly. You can do mortal wounds to somebody who falls back. Um, this is, like... This is going to be one of those stratagems that doesn't come up very often, but wins you the game when it does. Because your opponent's like, oh, I'll just fall back and like onto this objective. And you're just like, you're dead. I got assassination or whatever. <laughs> That's going to be good. But it's a little bit sad to lose a stratagem slot for that, but it is what it is. Uh, uh, one unit of destroyer cult or flayed one that, was, that just destroyed an enemy unit or caused it to become below half strength. You get to reanimate. Whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know how often that's going to happen. Hmm. The core, Destroyer Cult's not, already not really seeing the main, not good, but maybe, maybe it's fine. The Hyperphase Legion, or Hyper Crypt Legion seems kind of nuts, though. Maybe that's okay. All right, chat. Um, I am uh, getting a little bit of a headache here, so I think we're going to go ahead and, uh, and ramp up the show. Hope everybody had a good day. I hope everyone's having a great week. Hope everybody enjoyed all the world championship stuff. I certainly have, and uh, it's been a fun time. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, close things out here. But please, in just under two hours, come hang out with me over on the Purple Channel. We're going to be watching some Chaos Knights versus Astra Militarum. It's going to be a grand old time. So please come hang out with me for that. Tomorrow uh, at uh, 4 p.m. U.S. Eastern. I'm going to be playing against Blood Angels Iron Storm Strike Force uh, or I Iron Storm Spearhead. And um, that's going to be fun. And uh, yeah, otherwise, I'm going to go eat some food, take a little bit of a nap, and then I'll see you over on, on uh, the Twitchies in a little bit. So please come hang out with me over there. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Grim to keep it classy, folks. Have happy wargaming. And um, yeah, just, just keep being chill and stuff. Bye, everybody.